I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Lindsay Breykovic, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Alberta Joint School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you all for having me. So you teach math, writing, language, arts, full inclusion at Alpha Middle School. Correct. Okay, yes. so explain what language arts full inclusion means. Um, so basically all students that are um, on an IEP are just included into the regular education classroom. Um, there isn't a difference between a student without an IEP or a student with an IEP in my classroom. Um, I am the special education teacher, but I also have, um, I range in my classroom from regular ed kids to IEP with students that have SSTs, students that are on 504s, um, all of the in-between. So my job is really just to make sure that my students are receiving the accommodations and modifications of the curriculum um, in order to access the general ed curriculum. Okay, so explain what an SST is. An SST are, are students, or it's the student success team is what it is. And it is for students who have been identified in the sense of they are struggling in school for a certain reason. Um, they are not considered special education students at that point. Um, we try different interventions first and if they meet goals through those interventions, then we continue to, to work with them with that. If they don't meet the goals that we set forth, then we move toward the special education process. Um, but SSTs really are to um, gear toward what the student needs in order to meet their, their challenges, um, to keep them out of the special education process. But again, if, it, if that doesn't work, then we move in that direction. And what is a 504? 504 is actually a general education function. Um, but again, it's just students that have certain challenges. It could be behavioral, it could be academic. Um, it could be as simple as they just need help with test taking skills and what has previously been done for them wasn't working. And so it's just a more um, specific plan for them in order to help them through the education process. So then uh, in your program, you have a wide range of students. I certainly wide do. Wide range of abilities, <laughs> skills, attention spans, yes. uh, you name it. So wh what's that like for you? Um, it's challenging, but it also, it's a fun experience. Um, I have very, very high achieving students in my class as well as not so high achieving students, but it provides me the opportunity to pair those students up with one another, for them to, um, to work with each other and see the skills that each offers. Um, students who are not necessarily the highest achieving doesn't mean that they don't have skills that they can offer the classroom. So it is an opportunity to, um, to show my, or the students within that, that setting that um, everybody has something to offer to the classroom. Explain how crucial middle school is from, from social Right. Academic, emotional. Right. So, um, yes, it is about academics, and I understand that. But, but much more than that for me is really the social piece and the, the um, emotional well-being of my students. It is definitely a transition time. Um, they have come either from the elementary setting where they have been with one teacher all day long for the most part, and they are now coming up to middle school. Um, where there are a variety of teachers and classrooms that they are learning to transition from class to class. Um, or they are in eighth grade and preparing themselves to go on to high school, which they will be at the, the bottom of the barrel at that point. And so um, it really is for them to build their self-esteem at that point and have the foundational skills, um, both academically and socially, to be able to move on and be accepted into most likely a larger school than, than what we currently have. We are a very small school. We had um, an enrollment of 81 students last year at the middle school, and so generally students going on to high school are experiencing much larger classes and a larger campus. So, mm. now, Historically, though, students who, who struggle in middle school mm -hmm. um, really struggle in high school, and it, I mean, if you're really struggling in middle school, the chances of you completing high school um, are not so good. So what are some of the things that you do to maybe identify uh, kids who, who you know, may need extra help and, and what do you do to, to help them? So some of the students, as a special education teacher, um, I do have some of my students who are on IEPs and IEPs are um, directed at specifically what they need in order to be successful in a general classroom. 
Um, again, they are, are generally accommodations and modifications to the curriculum that are involved with that. But one thing that I have learned over the period of eight years of being at the middle school um, at Alverta is the importance of inv involving the students in their educational process. Um, it isn't about them just simply showing up to the classroom anymore. It really is about what they need to do to find success and to give them the tools um, to be successful in the classroom. And so I want to empower them. I want them to know what their accommodations are. I want them to be able to advocate for themselves. So as they move into high school, um, it does become much more about them advocating for themselves instead of their parents or their, their, their special education teacher. Of course, there is one of those in high school, but really um, it, it becomes about them saying, this is what I need, this is what my IEP says, this is what works for me for learning. Um, and the kids that I have seen go on, go on to high school have been quite successful. Um, I have many, many students that come back and tell me about their successes in high school. And so whether they be on an IEP when, ha when leaving, or mm -hmm. maybe they have been exited, um, or maybe they've been exited at some point throughout high school, which is the goal of special education students, obviously. Um, but I really want to empower them with their academics, with what they can do. Um, I think that there is success for everybody out there. It's just approaching the student in the right way and getting them to be on board with their education instead of just being a side piece to it. What's it like for you as a teacher to have those students who um, you can see them feeling empowered mm -hmm. and especially those with, with learning challenges and when they realize not only can they do the work right. but that you know they feel like they could be on the level with everybody else. Right. Um, that is a huge, huge component to my job. I, I love to see those successes and the students who maybe at one point were uh, too shy or, or didn't have that self-confidence of I can do it or I can get up and be like everybody else. Um, to see them grow in their, um, their social and their, their personal um, in their academic way is, is huge. They begin to understand that they do have the ability and they just simply learn in a different way, but it's not that they can't learn. It's they ha uh, the teacher and them have to work together, obviously, to find the best, um, the best way to fit the pieces together in order for them to find the success. But once they find that success, they then know this is how I learn and this is where I can go with my, my learning. Um, it's not, a di I don't consider it disabilities, I just consider it different abilities and everybody has different abilities. So for them to understand that that is what it is and everybody is experiencing some kind of that at some point throughout their life um, and making sure that they, they know that they can have the same success. Now I understand you're the response to intervention teacher, coordinator. Yes. So what, is, what is that? Explain what response so, to intervention is. So um, response to intervention came around about five or six years ago, I guess, into our district. Um, and what it was is instead of the discrepancy model with special education of um, you, you fail, you fail, you fail, you're then in special education, um, response to it to intervention really is to um, to give the interventions before getting to that special education. Um, uh, not, what is the word I want? Eligibility, I suppose, is what I'm looking for. Um, if you, what we look to do is to intervene before that. So we try an intervention. If it doesn't work, we try something else. If that doesn't work, we try something else. We don't just say immediately, okay, you are now eligible for special education um, and put them in on IEP. The, the response to intervention really is about grouping the kids into um, ability-based groups based on a certain concept. And so there, there are different tiers. We have tier one, tier two, and tier three. Um, tier one being the higher performing students and tier three generally being those who have already become eligible for special education. And then tier two are the in-betweeners where um, those are, are really the kids that we're focusing on to make sure that they don't continue to fall in their academics, we really want to boost them up. Um, tier three are the special ed students who are receiving their, their services during that time and extra interventions on the regular classroom work. 
There is so much involved, isn't there? There's quite a bit involved, yeah. yes. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're in the thick of it there. Yes, yes, very <laughs> much so. Well, it was nice speaking with you. We, we appreciate you joining us. We've been speaking with uh, Lindsay Breikovic, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Alberta Joint School District. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.